Hello and welcome back. This is Jenna from McGuire. I know I've been doing less videos lately, but I plan to get back on track now. So today I thought I'd share with you a fun surprise pop-up window card that does not require any specialty dies. So hopefully you have something on hand that would work for this. On the outside, these cards just look like normal cards, but when you open them up, there's a pop-up that creates a window. So you can do a little simple scene or something more elaborate. I have several examples hoping that one of the designs would work for you using some of your own products. And at the end, I have a bonus shaker card that's super easy. Okay, let's get started with this one. Now, I thought it'd be best to look at the completed card in action before we started creating. So here is how the card opens up and you can see that fun scene inside. This is very simple to do, very easy, and you can use any large open die there for that. And I have lots of examples of that today. So you can see this also stands up nicely for display. And this card, by the way, is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Okay, let's look at some of the products I'll be using throughout this video. This is the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for 2021. I like to use Hero Arts kits in my videos because the value is incredible. So the cost of this is about half the value, which I think is a great deal. Also, I like that they change up the themes each month, so you get a completely different look. Variety is always fun. Now this one has a large six by eight stamp set. There are some ink pads, lots of coordinating dies, and then some embellishments. So I'll be using this off and on throughout this video, but keep in mind you could do these techniques with whatever you have on hand. For this first card, I'm also using the new Hero Arts Mushroom and Ferns Fancy Die Set. I really like the detail in those leaves there. I think they can be used for lots of things. And then the mushrooms, I thought I would use those to create the look of layered die cuts, but it's really not a layering die set. What I did is I cut a bunch of mushrooms from light colors of brown and gray, and then also bright red. And I'm cutting apart different pieces of the mushrooms and then gluing them on top of one solid mushroom. So I started with an ivory base mushroom, then I did like a light gray for the top, and now just for the top of the mushroom alone, I'm doing bright red. So it looks like it was a layering die set, but really I just cut and pasted them together. Now I did this with a smaller mushroom also, and then also a few brown and light gray mini mushrooms too. For this card, I also used the Hero Arts Mushroom Forest Fancy Die Set. It comes with both of these dies, so you can use them together or separately. Now on this card, I used them separately, but I wanted to demonstrate what it looks like when you use them together, just so you can see you can create a frame or a window with these. I really like dies that allow you to off, uh, bo do both. They offer both because you can get more use from those dies. So that's how you make a frame with it. But for today, I'm just making a window, so I'm skipping the oval. I'm putting this towards the top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock to form the window. And this will be on the front of our card. I did trim it a little bit smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half inches so that I could put it on a colored note card and have a trim around the edge. Now here I'm using my Misty stamping tool to stamp Thank You Very Mush from, uh, with black ink. And that stamp is from the My Monthly Hero Kit that I showed you at the beginning. So now I'm just arranging some of the leaves and some of the mushrooms that I've created. Now for this, I like to use pieces of temporary tape to kind of tape them in place as I arrange them. You could also do press and seal, but in this case, I'm putting a piece in and then flipping it over, seeing if I like it, then move it around. I'm just trying to temporarily figure out where I want all these pieces to be in this window. Once I have them there, I can then kind of lift up each of the pieces and squeeze a little bit of strong liquid adhesive under it, as you can see me doing here. This will make sure it stays secure, and then I can remove those little tape pieces and use them again for something else. So for me, using those little pieces of tape are really helpful when I'm trying to create a scene. Okay, now that the front of our card is ready, let's move on to the inside before we glue it all together. So this is where we're creating that surprise pop-up window feature. For this particular size card, you're starting with a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half inches wide and a little bit less than five and a half inches tall. You're gonna score it right down the middle. I've already done that, but let me show you how to do it. You're scoring at four and a quarter inches and folding it in half. So this is basically a note card, right? Just a little bit short. 
Now we're also going to score at two and an eighth of an inch from each end of this. The nice thing about this scoreboard is the two and eighth of an inch mark has a little mark there. You can see that big dot at the top, so it's easy to find. Okay, so now we're going to fold along those score lines and you end up with a piece that looks like a W or an M, whatever you wanna think of. And this will be the inside pop-up feature, super easy. Next, I'm cutting a tiny bit off of each end. This is just to give you a finished look in the end. You could skip this if you want, but I just cut like an eighth of an inch off of each end. And there you can see our inside pop-up feature. Now it's time to add the window for that so we can create a scene. So I'm putting this right over the center score line. And you wanna make sure it's between the two score lines on the left and the right. So there you can see where it's positioned. And I'll run that through my die cut machine. You can use any large shape here as long as they're in between the two outside score lines and right on top the middle score line. So here you can see how it goes inside of a note card. That's a regular four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. Now before I assemble this, I wanted to stamp so very grateful on the inside. So I have this stamp set from Hero Arts and I actually cut the words apart so I could stack them. Cutting your stamps isn't a problem if you cut between the images and then you can always put them back together temporarily on your stamping block or in your MISTI and it allows you to get more life from your stamps. Now we can glue this inside of our note card. I have a navy note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm gluing one flap onto one side of the inside of the note card. I'm leaving a little bit of a navy trim around that. See how there's a navy trim? That's why I had cut that white piece a little bit smaller. Now I'm putting glue on the other flap and lining that up on the other side of the note card. So I've got that little bit of navy showing around the edge. And then you're gonna give this some time to dry. Just make sure you use a strong adhesive for this. Gina K Connect is perfect for it. Now that that's dried, I can add some leaves and mushrooms to our window scene. I'm gluing some right into the note card and then some will get glued to the white window so it pops up. Now you could have glued this all together before putting that white piece into the navy note card. However, I like to put the pop-up feature, the pop-up window in first. That way I can be sure that when I glue these pieces in, nothing sticks out. Basically, there's that fold line right down the center. Make sure nothing crosses the fold line. If it crosses the fold line, it might stick out of your card, and I'll talk more about that later. But if you just make it so that your little die cuts or whatever you add are either to the left of that middle score line or to the right, you'll have no problem. So you can see how I'm always closing it to make sure that the card closes nicely and nothing sticks out. But honestly, it's pretty easy to figure out. So again, I'm gluing some things onto the navy portion, but not over the score line in the middle, and some onto the white. That way, some things will be kind of set back and some things will be pulled forward. Then once I'm done with the inside, I can add the front onto our card. Now it's time to add some accents. I thought it'd be fun to use a white gel pen to add some little dots onto our mushrooms. Now I have always struggled with white gel pens. There are some that work better than others, but I'm always looking for a new option. I had bought these Arteza white gel pens quite a while ago and I've been trying them off screen and I've been impressed. I have yet to have one throw a fit. I don't know if you've ever used a white gel pen. They can be kind of moody. Well, I've never had problems with these, at least not yet. So I wanted to mention that today if you're looking for one. The box also has different sizes in it. And so if you need a white gel pen, that's a good option. Okay, now for our finished card, I did add some silver stars to the sky. I'll show you those later in this video. You can see the white gel pen details. And look at all of that fun layering. It looks like I used a layering die set, but really I just pieced those mushrooms together. And then when you open it up, there's more of the scene. I have room over there on the right to write my personal message on the inside. And I just think it's a fun surprise that the scene carries on into the inside. Now I used all die cuts for this, but you definitely could use stamped images that you've cut out or die cut to add into the scene too. I also like that this card stands up nicely for display. And I added some of those little silver stars to the inside too. 
Okay, let's go to our next example. This is again four and a quarter by five and a half inches. However, this time I did a landscape card and the fold is on the side. So here's a look at the completed card so you know the direction we're headed. Again, this is very easy to put together. You could use any window die there. And this is actually a better design for smaller dies since the pop-up part is a little bit smaller. Okay, so this time I'm using the Hero Arts Branches Infinity Die Set. This is really cool. There are two big dies and then one small one that does branches and leaves that you see there on the bottom. So there are two window cuts you can get from this, or you can layer them together. Let me show you. So here is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of green cardstock, and I cut just the outside one. Now from a darker green cardstock of the same size, I am using just the inside one. So there are two size windows you can use here, which is really handy. And look how cool it is when you layer them together. This is a nice intricate die set that would be great to use with any of your little critter images you have. For this, I'm gluing these two together and this will be for the front of the card. Once that's dry, I'm trimming a tiny, tiny bit off of all four sides, just to make this overall size a little bit less than four and a quarter by five and a half inches, because I want to have whatever note card I use to show around the edge. I also thought it'd be fun to add some kind of ground or grass in the background. I just hand cut that green piece and that'll get glued behind the window too, just for a little place for our little critters to sit on. All of this is getting glued onto a light blue piece of cardstock that is the same size as our forced frame here. For those little images, I used the My Monthly Hero Kit that I showed you earlier, and I just stamped, colored, and die cut them. Now I'm gluing this piece onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, and the fold is there on the left. Now for the sentiment, I use this Hero Arts Magical Force stamp set. It's the set that you see there on screen. And I thought that Have a Magical Birthday was great with a lot of the images we're using today. I also like the scene you can build from that stamp set, although I didn't use it today. Now let's do the inside of the card. I have a piece of cardstock here that is 11 inches long and then a little bit less than four and a quarter inches tall. And I'm scoring this right in half at five and a half inches. So basically this is how I make a top folded note card, but I just trimmed a little bit off so it's a little more narrow. The reason I'm doing that is it's gonna be that pop-up feature on the inside. Okay, so now I am doing my scores on this. This is two and three quarter inches from each end. So on this side, I'll do three and, uh, two and three quarter inches, and this side, two and three quarter inches. We can then fold along these score lines and we end up with that W shape piece that will be great for that pop-up feature. The last thing we need to do before die cutting our window is to trim a little bit off of each end, less than an eighth of an inch. This just gives it a nice finishing look or finished look when we put it inside of our folded card. Now, as far as what window die you use on this, it doesn't matter as long as it fits between the two outer edge score lines and it goes right across the middle score line. So I thought I'd use the smaller of the dies that do this little leafy branch window. So I ran that through my die cut machine and now check out that fun pop-up window that we have inside of our card. Very easy. You could use a basic oval or circle there if you want, which you'll see me do later. Now on the inside, I also wanted to add a sentiment. So I'm using one of my favorite stamp sets, the Hero Arts Message Strips stamp set and coordinating dies. These dies cut out those little sentiment strips perfectly. However, I'm just using the sentiments today. So I white heat embossed best, best wishes over there on the left panel, and I left the right panel plain so I could write a personal message there. But keep in mind, you could make your scene stretch across the inside of that card, and that would be awesome. I'm just not that great at creating scenes, so I tend to keep mine smaller. Now I'm putting adhesive on one of the flaps and putting it over there on the left of the inside of our folded card. And notice how there's a little trim along the side and the top and the bottom. And then I glued the other flap to the right. Now here I used a darker green cardstock and the same window die, and I'm just cutting little pieces of branches out to glue to the back of our window there. I could have done this before we assembled the card but I found it was better if I did it after because I can make sure that everything stays inside of the window and doesn't show when you uh, close the card. 
So notice, once again, everything I'm gluing to this is either to the left or the right of that middle score line. If it kind of hangs off, it might interfere with the folding or make the folding harder, or it might stick out when you close the card. So I glued a few of these pieces in, and then we're gonna test it. We'll close the card and make sure nothing's sticking out. If anything's sticking out, you could just give it a little bit of a trim or just move its placement. I again wanted a ground to have my little critter sit on. So I cut this dark green piece to kind of an arch and I folded it in half. And now I'm putting glue on the back of that and I'll line up the crease with this piece with the crease on the card. So it goes right into that hole there. Now I could have glued this in there before we did the pop-up window, but again, I really like to create the scene after it's assembled. So now I'm gluing a few of the extra little images I have. Some get glued right to that background and some get glued to the pop-up window portion. Again, just avoid that folded line right down the middle. Now after looking at my scene, when I close it, notice there's a little bit sticking out there because of the branches of our window. All I'm gonna do is give it a little haircut. So don't worry if something's sticking out, just change the placement or trim a little bit off. Nobody will ever know that we did this. So let's look at the completed card here. It fits in an envelope just fine. And when you take it out, you have this fun scene on the front. It's really a simple scene, but it looks elaborate thanks to those fun forest out, uh, outline dies that we have. That layering really adds a lot to it. Now I did add little white gel pen details here and there to the images just to add a little pop. And then when you open the card, you have the fun scene inside. So I added a few, few gnomes there. I kept it very simple, but really you could go to town and add a lot in there if you wanted to. Now there is room over there on the right to write your personal message, and this one stands up on display just fine. So this is another version of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch stand up surprise window pop-up card or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, let's do another. This time we have a vertical card or a portrait card. Again, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This one I think is my favorite. It just is a really fun pop-up surprise. Although I use a fun window die for this, a circle die would work great here or an oval, a rectangle, any basic shape. Let's get started with this card. For the background, I use the new Hero Arts Unicorn Bold Prints background stamp. I love this stamp. It would be fun to color. It's great for tone on tone. It's just fun and playful. You could even stamp, color, and cut out one of the unicorns to use on your card too. Now I didn't use this today, but keep that in mind if you wanted. I did use the background stamp to stamp with light gray on light gray cardstock. And that piece is a little smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I then used the Hero Arts Forest Vines window die, the one you see here, to cut from the top center. I also wanted to create a frame for that window. So I'm using that window die along with a slightly larger circle die. Sorry, my head gets in the way. Taping those together and then running it through my die cut machine with white cardstock. And there we have a little frame. I cut a few of those and stacked them together and glued them right on top of the gray piece so we would have nice dimension and a finished look to that scene. I like that you can use these window dies to create windows or frames. Okay, next I wanted to create some rainbows that I can use on the inside and outside of our card. I'm using the Hero Arts Fairy Doors Infinity die set. Now the die set does come with these windows so you could create doors, actual doors with hinges and such. However, I'm using it differently. I'm keeping all the dies temporarily taped together and cutting them for, from different rainbow color cardstock. Now this is not what it was intended for, right? But I thought I would stretch it and use it to make rainbows. So you can see all the pieces I did over there. We'll come back to those in a moment. But what I wanted to do here was just show you how these dies are supposed to work. So this is one of the doors and when you cut it, it has a little hinge over on the side and you can decorate with the other dies. So it's all different sizes of doors that you can put on your cards, but today using it as rainbows. So what I did is I cut apart pieces of this and I actually cut two of each color so I could create two rainbows. And I'm just taking them apart and gluing them onto white cardstock. So you can see I'm putting glue down here and I have another yellow arch that I'll glue right inside of that. This is a wonderful way to make rainbows. You can also use oval infinity, die, infinity dies or circle infinity dies. However, I thought this was fun because I could have a really tall rainbow with that side on the right, which you'll see me do today. 
So I glued all the arches together and then I cut the rainbow out. So you can see me cutting it out here. And then I have rainbows I can use on a few cards. For my scenes, I also created some unicorns. Now this was a uh, unicorn from a discontinued hero art set. Sorry, I didn't realize it was discontinued. However, I will link to a unicorn stamp set that's very similar below if you were interested in one. So I glued that to the window and I'm also stamping that magical birthday sentiment right below it. Then I took part of the rainbow that we created and I taped it to the back so that I kind of knew where I wanted it to be. When I was happy, I put some adhesive underneath it and let that dry. And now when I flip this over, I have a fun unicorn and rainbow scene. I have a top folding white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And on it, I put a slightly smaller piece of light blue cardstock. Now I'm putting our scene on the front of that. I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Dot Runner. I really like this and wanted to show you how easy it is to do the refill on it. You just take the old one out, pop the new one in, no fancy things needed, and you're good to go. So some folks asked how easy it was to change that, and I thought I'd show. Okay, now the front of the card is done. Let's do the pop-up on the inside. I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches wide and a little bit less than four and a quarter inches tall, and I already folded it in half. So I scored it at five and a half inches. I'll just demonstrate it here so you know. This is just like the last card. Okay, so now we're doing the two score lines on the side, and these are two and three quarter inches from both ends. And then we will be able to fold those and have our W shape that goes on the inside. And then finally, I trimmed a little bit off of both ends. It's folded here, but you just cut a little bit off, and that makes it fit on the inside nicely. To create the window, I'm using the same die that I used on the front, and I'm doing it kind of towards the top center. Just stay between that top and bottom score line and you're good to go, and you want it to go across that center score line. So this way I have a little bit of room to stamp a sentiment right below it. I wanted it so that it looked like light blue when you look through the window. So I have a piece of light blue cardstock that is five by four inches, and I'm scoring it right in half at two and a half inches. And I'll glue this into our note card. This time I'm doing it before adding the pop-up feature, but as I showed you earlier, you can do it after you add the pop-up feature. It really doesn't matter. For the sentiment on the inside, I actually did a little surgery here, and I cut out the word magical from the have a magical birthday sentiment. And on the inside, I'm stamping wishing you a magical day. The wishing you a and the word day are from that message strips sentiment set that I showed you earlier. And I'm just putting magical in there so that it would kind of tie in with the message on the front. So don't be afraid to cut up your stamps. It really allows you to get more use from them. I have another little unicorn that I stamped, colored, and cut out. And I'm gluing him at the end of one of our little rainbows here. I thought I would try assembling this before we put it in the card, just to give you that option. So I glued that rainbow to the back, making sure that that piece that we added doesn't hang out when you fold it. You just want to keep it above or below your score line there in the center. Some of my flowers in the window hung out when I folded it closed, so I cut those off, and I'm just going to glue them back in to make sure that they don't stick out. So I'm just gluing it so that the flower stays below that center score line, and that way I know it won't stick out when we fold it closed. So I'm reattaching these little flowers so I still have them as part of the scene. They're just a little bit lower or kind of angled a little bit different so it doesn't stick out. So now we can glue this to the inside of our card. So I'm putting an adhesive on that top flap and lining it up at the top, and then on the bottom flap and lining it up to the bottom. Now again, so this is showing you that you can do your scene before you glue this together, but usually I do it after, as you've seen me do in the other cards today. So here's our completed card. I did add some Trinity Stamp Star Confetti. That's what I used earlier and I'm using on most of my cards today. You can see how that catches the light nicely without adding bulk. We have the dimension of the window frame that, frame that we created and then a really big rainbow. It's a tall rainbow because I used the doors to create it. It had a tall arch to it. And then on the inside, we have a very simple pop-up scene using all the same products. I even glued some stars into that light blue piece on the background. Really easy to do. And again, you can use this with your basic die shapes. Okay, my next example is the same format, a vertical card. And this time I'm using one of those basic die shapes just to show that it really works well. We're using an oval for this. 
On this card, I made the focal point the inside, and I'm using the new Hero Arts Meadow Heroscape stamp set. I love their Heroscape sets. They're layering that create a scene really quickly. So I like to start with the solid most image first, and I'm stamping this with green. I actually doubled stamped it to make it a bit darker and a bit smoother. I then come in with the next image, and this one actually doesn't layer, it kind of fits in the open spaces, so it's easy to line up, and I stamp that one with pink ink. Now the next image actually layers on top of the green, and whenever I do layering sets, I like to heat set it between. It just keeps the inks more crisp, and they don't bleed together, or blend together as much. And this time I'm stamping with a darker green ink. All right, so let's set that aside. We'll need that in a bit. Let's do our pop-up feature, because that piece will go into it. Same as the last card, 11 inches long by a little bit less than four and a quarter inches tall. I folded it right in half, and then scored two and three quarter inches from both ends, just like we did on the last one. Again, I'm gonna close it up and cut a little bit off the end there, so it's just a little bit shorter on all sides. Now right there in the center, I'm using a Hero Arts oval die. I'm actually doing a little bit lower from center, but I am staying between the top and the bottom score lines. Okay, now we have that little scene that we stamped earlier. I use the coordinating die to cut it out, and I'm gluing it to the back of that window. So this time I'm assembling the inside of my card first. The reason, this card is gonna be a little more simple and I'm having all the fun on the inside of the card and the outside will be super clean and simple. And I made sure to glue this piece below that center score line so that it didn't stick out when we closed the card. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to do some inked clouds on the inside of our card. So I'm using this Hero Arts Cloudy Sky die set. You can see it over there on the right. And I'm just using the two cloud border dies to cut from some masking paper. I have my top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card open. And on the inside, I'm using that masking paper, some light blue ink and an inking tool to apply a little bit of a cloud scene that will show through that window. On the other cards, I added cardstock in there if I wanted a color to show through. But in this case, I thought it would be just as simple to do our inking right there in the center of the open note card. That way it shows through when we open it up and adds less bulk. So I continued to use these masked cloud borders and just moved them around so I could create a bit of a cloudy sky. So I'm just doing it three or four times to create that backdrop. You could definitely use a stencil here or do some stamping, anything you want. I then used those same cloud masks on the front corner of the card. Again, I'm keeping this very simple. So I'm just doing a little bit of cloud inking here in the corner only, and we'll do some basic stamping on top of that afterwards. I think that's one of the fun things about having a surprise on the inside of the card is you can keep the outside simple and save some time there if you want. Now on all the other cards, I did the front involved too. In this case, I kept it simple. On top of that, I stamped with black ink a sentiment from the My Monthly Hero Kit, and then two little fairies that are from the Heroscape stamp set that I used to create the inside. Okay, so now one last thing I wanted to do to that stamped layered scene there. I like to add even more interest to it by adding just little tiny dots of a darker color. So I added a few darker pink dots to the pink stamped area and a few darker green dots to the green stamped area. That just brings in more color and gives a look of more dimension to that little scene. Very easy to do. I'm not an artist. I'm not good at coloring. You really are just adding tiny dots here and there. Okay, now I'm putting glue on that top flap and glue on the bottom flap. And now I'm gluing this inside of our card. So I'm putting the bottom flap on the bottom of the inside of the card, the top flap to the top of the inside of the card. And you'll see we have our fun pop-up scene using a basic oval shape. Circles work great for this technique too. I thought it'd be fun to have a little fairy that's kind of flying right in the middle of that open window and kind of flutters when you open it. So I have a long thin strip of acetate that I cut from some packaging and I have a little fairy that I stamped and die cut. I'm gluing the acetate so it sticks out the right side of the fairy. So you'll see here it's just this piece of acetate sticking out the side. I will tape that acetate to be on the back side of our window. Now this is double-sided tape. You could use regular tape. I just don't remove the release paper from the other side. It just stays there. 
So now that's getting taped right there. So the fairy's sticking out and floating in that window. Super cool, and it kind of flutters when you open it. I just made sure that it was positioned so that the fairy is above that center score line so that it doesn't stick out when it's closed or it doesn't get folded. And then I glued another fairy above the opening. Now I'm stamping thank you right into that window and we can add our embellishments. I wanted to share with you this tool that I've been using lately that I really, really like. I talked about it on Instagram. It is the pickup stick from Trinity Stamps. One side has a wax pickup tip. The other side is a piercer. And I put tape on the end that is the wax pickup tip so I know. But what's cool about this is it's the two tools in one, super handy. And the tip is white, which I really like. Now, different pickup sticks work for different people in different ways. I've had some that worked okay for me in the past. I like this because it doesn't leave a black mark. It's nice and bright white, and it is really the best one that I've used. So I was really excited when Trinity Stamps came out with that. You can see how easy it is to pick up little embellishments and add it into your glue. These are the Trinity Stamps Star Confetti. I like that there are three different size stars in it. So you can create little uh, trails for your fairies here. And then these are the same ones I used on the other cards. And you can see how sparkly they are. And these are flat. So you can use them on the inside of the card without the bulk. All right, here's the completed card. You can see the little stars around our fairies and our soft clouds that I inked behind it. Now this looks like a very simple card, but when you open it up, the surprise is inside. Using a basic oval shape, you can see how that little fairy kind of flies there in the center and pops up when the card opens. You can see I also added the little star confetti to the inside of the card and around the frame just to create that little scene there in the middle. Really simple, but it looks a little more elaborate thanks to that layering stamp set. And once again, this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card that'll close up nicely to go in an envelope. Now, before we go, I have a bonus card that has nothing to do with pop-up cards. This is a shaker window card, but uh, Hero Arts just came out with some dies that would work great for the technique we used earlier, but I wanted to use it for shaker window. These are the Hero Arts Starry Clouds Infinity die set. All of these dies come together, which I think is awesome. So you can create different size windows, and this would work great for the technique I did earlier, the pop-up technique. But I also thought it'd be fun for a layered window shaker card. Very simple, and I just wanted to demonstrate that here. So I found some different colors of dark blue and dark purple cardstock from my scrap drawer. I cut them all to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm cutting a different size window from the center of each. So I'm creating these layers to create this kind of night sky or, or I don't know what you want to call this, um, like a layered scene here. Now I'm putting tape on the back of the front one, the one with the biggest opening. And then I'm putting a piece of acetate on that. So on the back of this, there'll be a piece of acetate. You can do recycled packaging, or use Hero Arts clear acetate sheets, or Lawn Fawn has some too. So now that I put the acetate on that, I have another of the same window die cut and I put it on the back. So the acetate is sandwiched between. Now I'm moving on to the smaller window frames and gluing those behind it. So the acetate is on the front. I'm putting liquid adhesive kind of around the whole inside edge of each layer so it's sealed shut. Now I have the smallest window glued there and I'm filling up that hole with lots of those confetti stars. I'm pushing them in there, just kind of filling that in. Then I'll put glue around the edge of that window opening and then glue this to a piece of solid navy cardstock. So this is a very fast, not too bulky shaker card window and it's got layers behind it. So the stars will go over the different layers and I think that's super fun. So I give that a little bit of time to dry and then I added it to a white note card and I added a thanks die cut and a stamp sentiment strip. Look how easy that was. And look at all that movement in there and you have the layered die cuts back there too. I just really like this die set. Thought it'd be fun with these stars to do a shaker window. But again, you could use this die set for the technique I showed you earlier. So if you have any night sky stamps or dies or any kind of space stuff, it would work great with these window dies too. Just wanted to include that because I thought it'd be fun with all that sparkle. All right, there you have it. A fun way to take your window dies or basic shape dies to create a 
pop-up window surprise scene on the inside of your card. I think doing things like this really makes us stand out as handmade over a store-bought card. Now, if you're interested in the products I use, I always link them below in my YouTube description, but also go to my blog because you'll see photos of all the cards, supplies listed there, and you can bookmark the cards to refer back to later. Now, at the end here, I have a couple other videos that are fun interactive cards that don't require specialty dies if you want to check those out. I appreciate you spending this time with me today. Always appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon with another video.